Well, what do you think? You bought a tractor. Yep. Cool, right? I call her Josie. We don't live on a farm. We live in a neighborhood. Yeah, that's, that's true. Our yard is so small, we don't even need a riding lawnmower. What are you going to do with a tractor? Um, you know, fix it up, get it running. Wait, wait, wait. It doesn't run? <laughs> nope. It's a good thing, too, because the brakes, totally shot. It's totally irresponsible to drive without brakes. Yeah, some people just don't think things through. Welcome to 40s Vintage. My name is John, and this is Josie, our 1944 Ford 2N tractor. We picked her up on auction a while ago for a really good price uh, because she doesn't run at all. Um, but that's okay. We're going to spend the next several videos going through and uh, sorting through everything. We're going to get brakes working. We're going to try and get it started up. It will start up. And then we're going to hopefully return her to her former glory. Let me uh, grab the camera and take you around and show you what we've got here. And then we're going to move uh, our truck, our 46 Dodge named Jack over here out of the garage and move Josie over into the middle. And that way we can start tearing apart this rear axle, maybe make it stop, which would be fun. All right. All right. So what we have here is, uh, as I said, 1944 Ford 2N. It's uh, powered by a flathead four-cylinder Ford Industrial engine, uh, six-volt positive ground. This one is still six-volt positive ground. A lot of them have been uh, trans uh, fixed up and set over to 12 volts negative ground, uh, which is much more common nowadays. This one still original. Um, no idea if it runs. Uh, we're hopefully going to find that out here in the coming days and weeks, and uh, we'll make it run if uh, if it doesn't want to. Um, not a lot to this tractor, three-speed transmission, um, three forward gears, one reverse gear, um, very fancy dashboard um, with uh, all sorts of things like volts or amperage, I should say, and oil pressure, and that's it. Um, here we have our governor control for accelerating. Um, an interesting thing on these tractors is uh, independent left and right brakes. Um, that means you can stomp on one side and it'll stop the wheel over there, uh, allowing you to do a nice sharp turn to get around the edge of the uh, field that you're working on. Um, over on the side, we've got our uh, intake and uh, exhaust updraft single barrel carburetor. Um, pretty common, pretty standard stuff. Um, and interestingly, for a tractor, the exhaust goes down underneath instead of um, up and out through the hood, like many of them do before, um, that we see nowadays. Uh, and that's kind of unique for the Ford N series tractors. Um, a lot of people didn't like that because they would get smashed on, on bits and pieces as they were. Uh, going through the fields, but um, I kind of like it. It looks kind of neat there. Uh, we're going to keep that. Um, on the back here, we've got uh, our draft control lever. Um, this controls our hydraulics at the back. Um, and at the back, we've got Ferguson's three-point system as well as a PTO. Um, interestingly, the three-point system is still in common use nowadays, uh, so you can get brand new uh, implements to attach to this 70-plus-year-old tractor. So um, let's go ahead, and we're going to move our 46 Dodge Jack out of the way, and that way we can start working on Josie, and we'll show you what we're going to do here. <laughs> Thank you. 
So at the back of our tractor here, we have the Ferguson three-point hitch system. Uh, this was the first production tractor to actually have this from the factory. Uh, this was a game changer back in the 40s. Uh, what this allowed you to do is to easily connect implements up and uh, the uh, hydraulic system up here would allow you to raise and lower. And it has this piston uh, for if you were pulling a plow behind uh, and it caught a rock instead of it uh, upsetting the whole tractor, uh, kicking the front end up in the air, potentially flipping it over, it would actually uh, force more pressure down in through the frame of the tractor into the front wheels and actually allow the tractor to dig in more and get more traction. In addition, with this spring here, it allowed the implement to actually come up and go over whatever rock it was. Much, much safer system. And uh, like I said, it is still in use today. You can buy brand new implements that are three-point hitch implements, the Ferguson three-point hitch system. Um, this one has a, a PTO, not a live PTO. That means that it is um, always going as long as it's turned on and, uh, and you're moving. Uh, this is going to be spinning, whether you have something hooked to it or not. There's no way to turn it off separate from uh, the hydraulics or anything. There was one system there. Um, but we do have on here a overrunning clutch. This is a must-have for modern implements on the back. Uh, this allows whatever implement that might be turning here to spin without turning the gears inside the differential, which would then in turn turn the wheels. A uh, big problem that a lot of people had, that a friend of mine had, uh, was uh, running a brush hog or some sort of mower deck. And uh, when they went to stop, the inertia of the uh, blades on the mower deck kept turning the PTO and without an overrunning clutch, that means it's turning the wheels and your tractor's going forward even though you're standing on the brakes as hard as you can. Very scary situation. So uh, that is a must have here. Uh, our next step, we're going to jack this thing up. We're going to get the wheels off and we're going to start tearing into this back end here and hopefully get some brakes going. That didn't work. So as you can see, we uh, spent quite a bit of time trying to find the right way to support the back of the tractor in a way that we felt comfortable that it wasn't come, come, come crashing down on us as we were working on it. And uh, we tried several uh, methods, but uh, my trusty jack stands were just not tall enough. Uh, perfectly adequate for the weight, they just, they just weren't tall enough to hold it up. Uh, this tractor sits really high, much higher than a car. Um, so the uh, solution I ended up coming up with is uh, going out and buying a big 4x4 and making my own jack stands. Uh, those seem to be pretty stable. I actually have Josie up on them right now. been up on them uh, for about 24 hours now with no problems. So I'm pretty comfortable working around it. We're going to leave the jack in place as a backup um, just so that we're totally safe underneath there. Uh, we don't want any mishaps here. So. Let's get back into it and start getting these wheels off, draining out the uh, fluids, and maybe even start tearing the part of the back end. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
There it is. Okay, so uh, next step is to drain out all the fluid from the transmission differential and hydraulic system. They all share the same reservoir, uh, and there's actually three drain plugs. So the first one is this uh, one right back here, this bolt that you see in the bottom here. Let me see if I can point to it. Oh, there we go, this one here. So we're gonna start there and drain everything out, uh, and then we're going to pull open this big one here and do everything out, out of that. And then finally, way up here in the front, uh, in front of my jack, you probably can't see very well is another giant one that we're going to pull out that's the transmission one itself um and most of the fluid will probably come out of that but since we are tilted downhill because we got the back jacked up there's going to be some coming out of each one of these uh all told there is from what i understand about five gallons uh, which is not going to fit in that but that's why we've got a bunch of jugs over there so we're going to be uh swapping we got a uh, funnel and we're going to spill everywhere um, yeah, it'll be funny. Okay, let's see what this does for us. I may not have enough leverage for this. I'm going the correct way, right? That would be funny if you're tightening it. I'm tightening it. Good job. That's sweet. Let's go the right way. Good idea. It's either turning or it's slipping around because it's a square and I'm using the socket, but uh, no, it's turning. Yippee skippy. Okay. Let's see how much of this I can catch. Huh? What do you think? What are the odds? Uh, I'm going to land the uh, plug down into this. Probably. This is why this is here. I should actually let it start here. This is gonna be messy. Yep. Okay, get ready for another one. Oh, this is going way faster than. Okay, hold on a sec. Where's that plug? Oh, oh wrong way, wrong way. Oh, oh, that's a mess. Shoot. Can you go grab that um, yellow? Where? I don't know. This thing? Nope, the yellow uh, funnel. This comes out way faster than my funnel can handle. Where is it? Oh, quick way? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is why people normally use a bucket. I think I may want to get a bucket. Or some liquids. Oh, that's a 
I missed. And I'm suddenly glad that I moved the camera back. Yep. That was a lot. Yep. I missed. Yeah. So our next step is to undo the bolts and nuts from the um, hub here. Um, looks like it's mostly nuts with one bolt here, which I think is kind of like a check bolt. Uh, but the first thing we need to do is we need to get all this dirt and crud off so that we can actually see what we're doing. And uh, then once we unbolt that, uh, we should be able to pull this drum off and expose the brakes. Uh, and then start pulling the rest of the bits and pieces out. Okay, let's find the right size for this. Oh, first try. Look at that. 11 sixteenths. All right, so we're going to do these. Should let us uh, take the drum off. We need to back out this adjuster for the um, brake. I if it's kind of loose there. Interesting. We got a couple different size items here, so we'll, um, we'll have to figure out what's what. So we're gonna try and separate this drum and uh, let's just see how this goes. Yeah. And that's why we put the bucket underneath. that drain just a little bit okay so this is going to come out okay it's really heavy okay yeah. do not let it fall on your feet um lift primarily by that i'm going to lift on this side okay got it yeah. okay all the way up this is all right. okay and then set it down and then bring it up Watch yourself. Go ahead and step out of the way. Okay. And ta-da! Got the axle out. And we're going to be replacing some seals down there. And we're going to see if we can see down there. Can't see very much, but uh, make sure there's no sludge in there when we put it back together. Keep playing. expected a bunch of oil on our brake pads because of that seal look at that there was no way this tractor was gonna stop that way so good thing we're replacing them all right so while we have things taken apart we're gonna go ahead and uh, fix up a few more of the leaky parts on here specifically um, the gasket that is in between this axle housing and the uh, transmission differential uh, especially on this side, it has a leak. The other side is not so bad, but we're going to replace it over there as well. Um, in order to do that, we need to take this fender off. Got a couple of bolts here that are holding it on, and then a bunch of uh, nuts around the axle housing, and then this should just come off. We can uh, scrape off, uh, I can see a lot of um, this uh, gasket material that was put in there. It looks like some sort of uh, silicone. And we'll go ahead and scrape all that off, get a nice clean machine surface there. And I've got a brand new gasket that was on. We'll throw some silicone on it and put it on there. And squish that all back, put it all together. Um, this is a perfect time to do this while we've got the axles out. 
um, and uh, just makes it a lot easier uh, since we're already in here. So we're going to go ahead and show you what that looks like. So here is the inside, our differential um, gear in here. You can see down here at the bottom, this is our PTO shaft, goes all the way to the back where the PTO goes. Um, behind here is where the hydraulic pump is, um, but as you can see it, it actually, well you probably can't see it, but it shares um, the same fluid as the differential and the transmission. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to throw some Loctite Silk and Clear um, all around here, just a real thin bead. And then we've got a nice brand new gasket. That's gonna go right over that as soon as I figure out how to slide down. Go over that. And then we're gonna do another thin, thin bead on the gasket here itself before we made it up to the tractor. Tighten everything back up and we'll be good. So I bought the wrong gasket for the axle casings. This one, uh, I don't know how I did this. It's actually for Ford NAA, which is a newer model, a little bit larger diameter, holes in different spots. So I had to order some parts. So we're not gonna be able to put things back on that side, but we're gonna go ahead and take the drum off of this side, get everything cleaned up. And uh, probably in the next video, you'll see us putting everything back together. Let's get to it. So, previous owner put some, I don't know, something to try and stop the leak. I'm not exactly sure what that is, but we're going to get rid of it. Okay, so we're gonna spend a little bit of time cleaning this up, pulling these old brakes off, spraying everything with the brake clean, getting everything 
back to how it should be ready to go back together. Um, and when we get the other parts that we need, we're actually going to be able to finish this up. I think that's where we're going to wrap this one up for today. Uh, please come back, watch us put back together, see if we actually fix the brakes or if we're still brakeless. Um, as always, appreciate you watching, and uh, thanks for coming back.